The last photo from the Voyager 1 probe shows the expanse of space filled with planets, their moons, and asteroids. Among them is our Earth, a small, bright dot concealing the boundless wonders of a living planet. After taking its farewell picture, Voyager 1 permanently deactivated its cameras and set off to explore the interstellar space, previously inaccessible to humanity. So, since February 14, 1990, we have been unable to see what the dormant cameras of the probe see. Why were they turned off? And is it possible to reactivate them? Voyager 1 has been a remarkable success for its creators. No one expected it to continue operating in space for so many years. For those who were born in the year of Voyager's launch and have lived until today, they are now 45 years old. In the United States, this generation is often referred to as Voyager, and there is even a movie named after them, Voyagers. Initially, the goal of the launch was to explore Jupiter and Saturn, and transmit the first images from a significant distance from Earth. The probe achieved this mission in 1978, showing its craters Earth and the Moon from a new perspective, which was truly remarkable. However, scientists had a sense of romance and understanding that Voyager 1 would not return and would venture far into space, so they turned it into a messenger for our civilization. On board the probe is the Golden Record, which includes greetings in 55 languages, images of people and places on Earth, and a collection of music from various eras. In 1979, the spacecraft Voyager 1 approached the giant of the solar system, the planet Jupiter. This mission became historic, providing scientists with incredible discoveries. For the first time in history, active volcanoes were discovered but not on Earth, but on Jupiter's moon Io. In addition, the probe photographed two mysterious moons named Debe and Matisse and unraveled the secrets of the ring system. However, perhaps the most astonishing moment was the discovery of the first lightning outside our home planet, in Jupiter's atmosphere. As it continued its journey deeper into space, the probe reached Saturn, encountering its majestic moon, Titan. The encounter with this enigmatic world yielded a valuable prize, the discovery of three poorly understood moons, Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. But the real treasure was the exploration of Titan, where the first Earth-like atmosphere rich in nitrogen was identified, along with the possibility of the existence of liquid methane and ethane forms. Next, Voyager 1 ascended above the plane of the planetary system, preparing to leave our solar system. At a distance of about 4 billion miles, the probe took its final planned images, a family portrait. This unique series of photographs captured Venus, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, all arranged around the Sun. To capture these images, on February 13, 1990, Voyager 1 conducted a three-hour warm-up of its cameras. Following this, its instruments were directed towards Neptune. The photograph was created using a single wide-angle camera, but each of the planets was individually photographed using a narrow-angle camera with a focal length of 1500 millimeters, specifically aimed at the respective planet. When the Voyagers were being developed, the charge-coupled device technology, which later became the standard for virtually all digital cameras, were just beginning to be developed in laboratories. That's why the camera mechanism on these spacecraft resembles the operation of cathode ray tubes in old cathode ray tube televisions. As the probe Voyager 1 gradually moved away from the Sun, the planets and their moons became less illuminated in the camera lenses. This required the use of longer exposure times, the period during which the camera lens remained open to capture an image. However, due to the immense speed of the Voyager's flight, the photos would have been blurred. To prevent this, a special rotating platform was used to stabilize the cameras. All images from the probe were recorded onto a digital tape, similar to a video cassette. Just like a video cassette is played during communication sessions with Earth, the data was transmitted at a rate of 7.2 kilobits per second. To obtain the image, filters of different colors, including red, blue, and green, were used. These filters captured separate images that were then combined into one. It is worth noting that the photograph does not include Mars, which was poorly illuminated at the time of the capture, as well as Mercury, which was too close to the Sun to be photographed. The photograph exhibits a distinctive elongated artifact, which is a result of scattered sunlight. This effect occurred due to the use of long exposures during the capture. 
0.72, and 0.72 seconds, as well as the diffraction of light on the slits of a special calibration lamp placed in front of the lens of Voyager's wide-angle camera. To transmit all the image data back to Earth, it required time and four separate communication sessions with NASA's Deep Space Network. On May 1, 1990, the images were received by the mission team. At the time of the capture, the leading planetary scientist and science communicator was Carl Sagan. He crafted an emotional and inspirational essay based on this photograph, known as the pale blue dot. This address is often likened to the famous commencement speech of Steve Jobs at Stanford. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on the mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Carl Sagan played a pivotal role in the American space program, served as an eminent planetary scientist and NASA consultant since the 1950s. His influence and expertise were profoundly felt across numerous space missions. He advised the Apollo astronauts before their historic moon landing. The scientist also collaborated with NASA as a leading scientist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where he contributed to the design and management of many missions, such as Mariner 2 to Venus, Mariner 9, Viking 1 and Viking 2 to Mars, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 to the Outer Solar System, and the Galileo mission to Jupiter. Sir Sagan was a member of the Voyager mission's visualization team. His original idea to use the cameras of one of the Voyager spacecraft to capture Earth in 1981 was a significant milestone. He recognized that due to the immense distance of the spacecraft, the images might not have substantial informational value. Nevertheless, he and his team felt that these images carried an important message. They wanted people to see Earth's vulnerability and understand that our planet is just a small, fragile dot in the vast cosmic ocean. This historic shot marked the final chapter for the cosmic traveler. Everything that happened afterward exceeded the mission's plan. Voyager 1 won't start photographing again for several important reasons. Number 1. Immense distance. The probe has traveled so far from Earth that transmitting data back to our planet has become extremely challenging. Signals from such a remote location require a significant amount of time to reach the laboratory, making photography and image transmission practically impossible. Number 2. Limited resources. Over the course of its long mission, Voyager 1 has depleted the energy sources required to operate its cameras. Due to the aging of its equipment, it's no longer capable of capturing photographs and conducting scientific research. Number 3. Venturing into interstellar space. Voyager 1 is currently beyond the boundaries of our solar system, exploring interstellar space, an entirely new frontier for humanity. Its mission is now focused on studying the environment outside the solar system. The spacecraft continues its remarkable journey, but photographing planets is no longer part of its mission. This task is better handled by modern telescopes and research probes. 